kick some ass, get the girl, and try to look dope while you're doing it. DJ, welcome to India. You know, it's so exciting for us that you chose to have the worldwide premiere of Triple X here in our country. You said it's been a dream for you to visit the country, a dream that Deepika Padukone made true. Yeah. I want to ask you, what have been those standout memories from your journey in India that you're going to take back home with you? Well, I think the, the, the overwhelming sort of energy of the city, uh, particularly here in Mumbai, is so amazing. But I also find that there's sort of this sort of like kindness and reverence, and particularly for uh, Deepika and Vin. And so I think it's just really going to be like the, the sort of energy and the love of the people, but also the kindness. Yeah. yeah. Was there that one moment that you realized the superstardom that Deepika Padukone really enjoys? Was there that one moment that actually blew your mind? When was that, in fact? <laughs> well, you know when it blew my mind is when we decided, we, uh, Deepika and I had met in, in Toronto, and then it all kind of went out. She went and met Vin, and we decided she was going to be in the film, and then my... Uh, my little small Twitter account went from, it must have grown overnight like 5,000 uh, 5, fans. So I went on the next day, I was like, what is going on? And then I realized, wow, this is pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was snooping around your little small Twitter account yeah. and I came across this really interesting quote by Billy Wilder that you endorse and I'm going to read that out. Okay. You basically said, a director must be a policeman, a midwife a psychoanalyst, a sycophant, and a bastard. <laughs> so I want you to tell me, on the sets of Triple X, yes. who were you, which of these things Oh, too? <laughs> that's really interesting. You're going to get me in big trouble here. Uh, no, I think it's really interesting because the job of a filmmaker or of a director, particularly you when you have so many dynamic people and crew and cast, is that literally it depends on the day, it depends on the situation, whether you're going to be a psychoanalyst, whether you have to be a bastard. Uh, and then also the, the uh, it just it just that that quote by Billy Wilder to me encompassed everything that I feel I go through when I'm when I'm on the set every day. And so I just I just love that quote. It just seems to capitalize it. I'm going to let you off a little easily, <laughs> but I'll let maybe just name one. Maybe one. Did you see yourself be any of these two? One person in particular. Uh, well, no, I would say like the bastard part would probably come in when these guys were, it was almost like being in a classroom where everyone's fooling around and uh, I have to get my work done. So there'd be times where maybe I got a little stern, but I think mostly uh, I, it would be in general. And I think um, really with uh, a psychoanalyst, I think mo mostly with that, a lot of that would happen with Vin because Vin goes very, very deep. Even the most simple little scene, which seems like, oh, we're just going to move this from here to here, Vin gets very, very sort of deep and cerebral. So I feel like I have to really get in there and analyze each situation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. You're also, you've attempted to make a global film, you said, with cast from across the world, which also means that's a much huger audience to impress and be sensitive to. Uh, Deepika Padukone's accent, for, it, for instance, came under some amount of criticism. I just want to ask you, was that a conscious decision while filming? Sorry, darling. Private party. <laughs> Invitation must have got lost in the mail. The men who come to this island are on the run. But not you. You're looking for someone. And who's to say I haven't already found her? Whatever it is you're looking for, you're gonna come up short. Uh, yeah, I just, honestly, I just wanted her to be herself and not have to worry about, um, uh, oh, let's have a British accent, let's do this. I just really, really wanted to embrace who she was because I think she's such a dynamic, uh, uh, wonderful personality that if that if it was an accent in there sort of that she was trying to perfect is that really presenting who she really is to the world so it was really important to me to be authentic to this global cast even with Ruby Rose who she had told me oh I want to speak with her. I want to get an accent I want to be an American I'm like no I want you to be Ruby I want to hear that so for me it was a conscious decision with Deepika but also with the entire cast to say like look this is my, even in my Los Angeles, when I go to the coffee shop and go get gas and do my thing, I'm coming across people from all different parts of the world, all different cultures, all different uh, ethnicities. And so I just wanted this movie to be representative of that. And I think that's also, it almost gives everyone in the uh, fans in the movie, they really get their own little pocket to hang on to and say, yes, that's, that's who we fell in love with, that's who she is, and let's embrace that. Right. There's so much talk about um, the chemistry that Vin and Deepika share, for instance, and it's something that you were one of the first people to catch on to. Mm -hmm. So really, you want to take me through what it is about the two of them <laughs> together that blew your mind and where said to... Well, you know, it was interesting because it was a, an audition that we talked about that I saw that they had done a couple years ago. And in looking at that audition, um, there was Vin and a few other actresses and things. And so like ha having kind of sifting through that and looking, when it came to their two scenes together, 
uh, it just was there. Like I was looking, you know, I'm looking at a videotape that was made three years ago or two years ago, and I just watched it and I just thought, wow, even the way Vin's behaving is completely different than I saw him behave in the other auditions with the same scene. And it was just so evident to me that, that she should be Serena from that moment on. And so then I showed Jeff Kirschenbaum, who was uh, the producer who was also on the Fast franchise. And um, we just thought that it would work well together. And then we started writing the character, hoping and praying that we can get to the yeah. Yeah, yeah. And finally, you know, you surprised us at the press meet uh, yesterday when you indicated a possible uh, sequel <laughs> to the franchise with the Pika and Vin. Yeah. What about it can you tell us at this point in time, besides the fact that you've promised there's going to be a whole lot of dance? <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, yeah, we wanted to look at it. Well, I know, we, we just thought, like, we've obviously, having made the movie and seen the movie and watched the audience respond to the movie, we realized that this whole entire group of extreme characters in Triple X provided us this great menu and this sort of great sort of tangents and stuff that we can go off onto. So we've come up with a pretty interesting storyline that has our Triple X team sort of separated at a moment and having to get them all back together under really extreme circumstances. So that's kind of where we're leaning right now. That sounds really exciting. All the best for the film Thank and you. it's been such a pleasure talking to you. It was a pleasure talking Thank to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For more videos like this, subscribe to Film Companion. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and Snapchat. We're everywhere.